Welcome to the next section of the course. In this section, we'll learn about different approaches for using CSS in React. Now, the first option is what we have in our project already. We can define CSS styles in a separate CSS file, and then we can import that CSS file into some component file, and those CSS declarations will be made available for us to use in line. So for example, here in our app.js component, on line number two, we are importing the app CSS file. Notice we're just simply importing that CSS file like any other JavaScript file. This is something that is configured by Create React App and uh, Webpack. So it's totally fine importing this CSS file into a JavaScript file. And if I go into this file in VS Code, we can just command click to go into it and that will open it up. We'll notice all of our CSS uh, class declarations declared here. And these are going to match the values we pass to the class name attribute on our JSX elements. So for example, here we have app logo, here we have app header, app link. And if I go back into app.js, we'll notice that's exactly what we're passing in as a string to class name throughout these various components. So here we have app logo, here we have app link, and here we have app header. So as soon as we import that CSS uh, file into this JS file, we gain access to all of those CSS classes and we could simply populate them in line. However, there is a problem to this approach and that is that these CSS classes, in fact, any styles that we declare in our CSS files are not local or scoped by default. What that means is they're not actually limited to this component. They actually become global CSS styles that are available in any component. So as soon as we import app.css, if we were to, for example, use app link or app header in any other component, it would still have access to these declarations and thus apply those styles. And I want to prove that to you right now by opening up our index.js file. And here below our app component, I'm just going to render some regular JSX. I'm going to do a hyperlink. So here's my anchor tag. I'll just give it an arbitrary href with uh, forward slash because we do need to provide that to uh, make sure ESLint, our linter is happy. But afterwards, I can provide a class name and I'll give it the exact same name of app link. This is the exact same CSS class name that we have in our app.js file. In here, I'm just going to close this off and provide some text of some link. Save that. And if I scroll down on my browser page, you'll notice right here at the very bottom, we have some link and notice that it automatically has those blue styles applied. Those blue styles are coming from app link. If I scroll down here, you can see it adds the color with that light blue, and that is making its way into a totally separate hyperlink in a totally separate JS file. So that's a problem, right? Especially when we're dealing with things like element selectors, it's very easy to, for example, have an anchor tag in some CSS file. And then as soon as we import that CSS file, all of a sudden those elements uh, can, and, this, and their styles can pollute the entire code base and make their way into unexpected places. And even if we stick with CSS classes, which is a little bit better, it's not guaranteed to work because you know you might have a, a, a very common CSS class name like header or link or active link, and then some other developer might simply assign that class name to one of their uh, JSX elements in a file, and then all of a sudden they're getting these uh, styles and they may not know where they're coming from and they might conflict with uh, the same class names or the same CSS declarations in other classes. All of that is to say that this approach is not great. It's typically considered a good idea to limit global pollution, which means having things we do in one file affect or make their way into another file. And there's different solutions to this problem in the React ecosystem, and we're going to talk about them throughout this section. But this just goes to show you that this is still a valid approach to CSS in React. We can simply have a regular CSS file like we would have with a basic web application. And in there, we can define our styles, our, our element selectors, our class selectors, our ID selectors, target those things, import that CSS file into any JS file in our project, and then use those classes uh, for the class name uh, attribute on our um, respective elements in JSX. Totally valid, but as we can see, it does have that cost of being global and thus making it potentially difficult uh, to reason about. So we're gonna start to take a look at some solutions uh, for this problem in the upcoming lessons, and I will see you there.